Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad, and I don't quite have a home. So I want to help you travel smarter today because I'm going to be going off on a long series of travels. So I'm going to be living out of Airbnbs and hotels, so I'm not going to really have a home base for a while. And I figured if you travel very frequently, then you probably are going to be in this situation as well. And so because of that, you might also be in the same situation. So you're staying with friends, you're staying with family, or you're staying in a place where you can't quite control the environment. You don't know where to shoot from. It might be noisy. So I thought I'd share a couple of good places that you can travel vlog when you are on the go. So the first tip is to use what you have. So if you're in a quiet place and you've got a quiet corner in a place that you're staying and you've got access to a clean couch, that can easily be a quick studio setup as you just saw. I even used this setup the other day, which was a run and gun, just it forced me to be creative, which is really nice sometimes. So don't look at it as an obstacle, but look at difficult shooting situations or unfamiliar shooting situations, more like a creative challenge that you have to overcome. So one of the easiest places, if you have a car or you have a rental car, is to shoot in a car because you can control both the location, the lighting, it's sort of easy in terms of figuring out the frame but it's also really easy to do the acoustics you don't have to worry about external noise coming in it sounds a little bit echoey and boxy in here but that's fine it's better than a lot of ambient noise or people talking or phones ringing things like that you can really control the environment in a car in terms of the lighting the audio not in terms of the temperature because it is really hot in here so i'm going to go ahead and go to the next place where you can shoot when you're on the road so one other thing you can try is to set up a dash cam. So if you've got an action camera or if you've got a camera that you can mount on the dash, then you can use that while you're driving. So you can kind of do a sort of walk and talk, but more of a drive and talk. So you're basically maximizing the time that you have. So you can use that as an opportunity to shoot videos without actually looking at the camera. So when you're driving, don't look at the camera. That's not good. But if you're parked, you can look at the camera now I'm gonna leave the parking lot and go to the next location and do a little bit of drive and talk for you. So just as I made that turn, I had to unplug the external mic from the GoPro because it kept making the GoPro fall over. So I had to take that out. So hopefully the audio is decent enough, but it should be good enough in a car. I mean, I have the air conditioning on because it's very hot outside, but hopefully that's not affecting what you can hear too bad. So like I said before, you can use the opportunity when you're in a car, if you mount your camera on a tripod or on a dash cam, then it can be really easy to actually shoot a video when you're on the go. One thing that's important to do when you're shooting on the go is you can actually use that to your advantage. So you can shoot in different segments. So one thing to do is shoot things like you've seen in this video in different locations that keeps everything visually interesting. But it also just might be a necessity for the way you're traveling. So if you're traveling to a lot of places and you're on the go, you're not gonna have like a sort of home studio setup, then this is really ideal. You can use it to your advantage. So shoot in segments, make each segment as interesting or as visually different as possible and try to come up with some different creative ways to set up your shots. So what happens a lot of times when you pull the microphone out of a camera when it's already in use, then that means the microphone is gonna just totally cut out. The audio is gonna cut out between the first microphone and then you unplug it, then the audio is gonna be silent. So I'm reshooting this part just in case because I don't know if I lost all of that audio. You can sort of mount the camera down here and place it if you've got a little bit of space, you know, where the cup holders are or something along those lines. You don't necessarily have to mount it on the dashboard. But what this does is it allows you to shoot in segments, which is what I was recommending before. So you can shoot each of your shots, especially if you're on the go, you can instead of seeing it as something that's a difficulty, you can see it as kind of an advantage. So where each shot is a different visual style. And a car is a really easy one because you've got this nice sort of built-in moving background. And it's easy to talk to the camera because you don't even have to look at it. So if you're shy, this is an ideal one for you. And the audio situation is pretty good because you don't have to worry about external noise. So it's all great. You stop at a rest stop or you 
stop at something cool along the way, you can just grab your camera and go from there. So one place that's really good to shoot from is in the car. Whether you're driving or a passenger, it makes for a really nice and different kind of shot that's very easy and straightforward to set up. So one other place you can shoot is an empty parking lot. Clearly I have failed at the Clearly I have failed with the empty part, but generally when you have an empty parking lot, you've got a lot of space. If you've got a drone with you, you can take photos or videos from above to give you a second angle for that good B-roll. And the parking lot allows you to shoot from different angles and it's usually pretty noise, it's usually pretty quiet. So shooting in a parking lot, obviously if you have a car, parking lots are very accessible to you. You can change your location, so if the parking lot is too crowded, can find one that's a little bit quieter and less crowded and you can also use it for the next step which is to do just a plain sort of walk and talk so now so basically you've gone from the parking lot and then you can just sort of take the camera with you as a walk and talk and then the background kind of becomes part of the story that you're trying to tell so you might see something interesting and point over like Hey, look at those trees, aren't they cool? Or you can just keep walking and talking. You'll get a little bit of noise from the cars, but maybe you're walking in a place that doesn't have as much traffic or you're walking toward a place that doesn't have as much traffic. So this is a really another good way to sort of shoot when you don't have a studio set up, you don't have a home set up, so you've kind of got to be outside. So another one, a great one obviously, is the walk and talk, which Personally, it's one of my favorites because it sort of captures your reaction if you're traveling, especially about the places. So you see something really interesting or cool or scary, then your face is gonna react quickly and you're gonna capture that on camera. So if you're somebody who vlogs a lot, a lot of this is probably gonna come as second nature to you. But if you're somebody who does a lot of tech reviews or a lot of different kinds of shooting, then this might actually be helpful for you. So I feel much more comfortable when I can control the environment, when I'm doing a review, when I have my sort of regular setup. But being out and about kind of forces you to be creative and actually makes the shots more interesting. So that's one thing that you can try to do. And a walk and talk is great for that. Again, being mobile like this allows you to sort of switch your background very easily. So if you're in the car, you go to the parking lot, or if you're walking, obviously you can walk to a park or to a quieter spot and set up for your next shot. So obviously if you're shooting in a park, you can generally find quieter spots with this great natural light from outdoors. So you don't have to worry about lighting and you can have a nice background as well, different colors. Maybe the leaves are changing color and so on. Now, if you're wondering about the setup that I'm using, the tripod that I'm using, I'm using this Joby tripod, which I think is really good for a minimal setup. It's very versatile, so let me go ahead and show you that. All right, I need to fix that. But basically what I've done is you can take this tripod and pretty much attach it to anything you want. Or what you can do is sort of have this minimal GoPro setup. So that basically allows you to put the Rode Video Micro this is another adapter. I'll link to all of this stuff in the description below if you want to check it out. But basically this shows you the setup that I'm using right now for the Joby. And I've reviewed the Joby as well, so I guess I'll link to that review right up there so you can see more about it. But this is a really, really versatile tripod. It's not too big as you can see. It comes in really handy. If you do end up traveling with two cameras like this, then you can use this one obviously to give you your secondary b-roll which, which can come in really handy and I'm gonna turn the microphone away now from this traffic because it's really loud so but I'm still sort of recording that so you can see the lighting is gonna be obviously better here and there's a lot less noise this is uh, one setup the set this is another setup that I'm showing you so you've got these two setups if you have two cameras you don't need them obviously you can just use your phone but if you have two of them you can use them to shoot your own b-roll which is always very helpful and uh, just make sure while you're trying to manage this camera and this microphone that you're looking at the screen to make sure that you are completely in frame and another thing about shooting in a situation like this when you're on the go is you can actually make it a part of your story. So let's say you want to grab a cup of coffee. 
should also add you can use a walk and talk as a really good opportunity for some really really easy and on the fly b-roll like this feet walking is always an easy one or just showing the ground as you walk is another one too so something to show between shots can also use the backgrounds that you have so this is a nice quiet spot with a no parking sign there but circumstance like this where it's quiet and you're walking makes for really easy background transitions so you have a more interesting background one thing that I did forget to mention though is if you're staying at somebody else's place or generally at hotels the quiet times to shoot a good time to shoot is between about 9 30 and 11 30 in the morning and about 2 and about 2 p.m. to about 4 in the afternoon those are generally really quiet times both for people indoors because they're out working they're not at lunch okay so let me stop and say that you can also use airplane bathrooms just pretty much any quiet space where you have a little bit of privacy and can create some sort of a different angle make it part of your video like a laundry room works anywhere where you can get a small field of view so there's not a lot of distracting things going behind you those closed spaces also are pretty good for sound or as good as you can get them and it makes it easy for you to set up a shot without having to think too much those are really good good times to shoot and it's generally when it's most quiet and there's a truck coming now so we gotta go to the next spot okay yeah I uh, still didn't forget about my coffee so I'm trying to find some coffee now and you probably have some great creative ideas on where to shoot so let me know about those in the comments below so somewhere like a cafe is on. My foot on that. So another tip I'd add is if you're gonna have this kind of style and setup, then it's probably worth investing more in a good microphone as opposed to a great camera. If that's sort of if your budget is between camera or microphone, you're probably better off going with a good microphone because it's gonna be more difficult to work with your audio when you're especially when you're out and about. It's gonna be harder to capture the sound, but generally when you're vlogging it's handheld. So the microphone is going to be like this, it's going to be capturing your voice very well and you're going to have good lighting. So I would say if you had to choose between the two, go with a good microphone. I can recommend a couple in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, just sort of me walking around and just going over some things that have sort of helped me because I often don't have a really ideal shooting location or the location changes. So I've got to kind of improvise on the go. So hopefully this has helped you as well. Another thing I would say is if you are going to take a long trip, for example, or you've got a very different shooting setup or you're moving into a new apartment, Apartment, then use those as opportunities for example if you're going to be traveling for a long time and don't really know or can't think of where you're gonna vlog other people might also have that question so it's a good opportunity for you to practice that in a video so practice maybe doing a little bit of vlogging or trying out different shooting styles different shooting locations so it might actually sort of be a blessing in disguise so be sure to take those opportunities when they present themselves let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and if you like this video, found it useful or if you like coffee, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks very much again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Alright, so there's a really good channel that I watch, Potato Jet. I don't need to really link to him, I don't think. So, it'd be nice if you link back to me. But he does this thing where he reads comments at the end of all of his videos and I won't probably do it in every video I don't want to completely steal the idea but I thought it might be kind of interesting to go over some of your comments of recently here's some comments from my last video about the GoPro Hero 7 Black which just went on sale for $100 and I just picked one up you saw it earlier in the video this one says dude the 8 is this this one says dude the 8 is coming out on the 19th, won't need the audio adapter, seriously don't get it now, I think it means don't get the 7 now. And uh, well that's generally when I buy a product is I'll usually be one model behind because I want to see how well it does, how durable it is, which is really important to me because I travel so often. Oh my god, your video is so authentic. 
Safe. Thank you, Nora. Here's another one about a $6 action cam I reviewed recently. Audio quality test, underwater, what the f Who does that? I do that. Here's one of my India scams video. 3,700 likes, 3,700 dislikes. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be Thanos. Nice. All right, anyway, that's enough for the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.